I didn't really want to make this video because everyone and their mom has already talked about it, but after thinking about it for a little bit, I think it is important to talk about the spy balloon because <laughs> it is far more dangerous than it might seem on the surface. That Chinese spy balloon that was that giant Chinese spy balloon that's riveted the nation. Moments ago, the U.S. shot down the suspected Chinese surveillance balloon off the coast of the Carolinas. If you've been following Balloon Gate, <laughs> you will know that the United States detected a balloon floating over Montana and immediately said it was a Chinese spy balloon. This prompted the Chinese government to respond and say it was a weather balloon. Then the United States shot it down with cheers from its people, and now we will never know the truth. Go! Boom! And the reason I say we will never know the truth is because the Western media is calling it a Chinese spy balloon, and they won't change their story now. It is a Chinese spy balloon in their minds. And the US Navy will never admit it isn't anything other than a spy balloon because they'll lose face uh, for shooting it down and then, oh, it's just a weather balloon. So any evidence presented by China to say it was a weather balloon at this point will be ignored. Our perception dictates our reality. So what we believe is what we believe is real. So in the minds of many people, this is a Chinese spy balloon. You can argue in the comments all you want, but I don't think that's going to change anything. On the surface, this is all kind of silly and can be laughed off by most people. Why would a huge visible balloon uh, be used to spy on your en enemy when there are other means available? The US government even said that China has better ways to spy and that the balloon wasn't really useful for spying. So if it isn't that useful and can easily be shot down, why do I claim in the title it is more dangerous than a casual observer might think. This is actually where things get darker, and this is what I really want to talk about in this video. So have you ever been so angry that you wanted to destroy someone? Probably not. Most uh, of us don't go around getting into fights or wanting to hurt other people. As a matter of fact, most of us uh, have never actually been in a real fight, and most people try to avoid conflict. There are even uh, reports about soldiers missing targets when they're aiming because they pull up right at the last second before firing because they don't actually want to hurt anyone. Uh, but most rational people understand that conflict is not the best solution to solve political issues or even personal issues, which is why this balloon is so dangerous. The United States strategy towards China is pretty simple, and it is the strategy that they use from most countries. It's a three-part strategy. Step one is to create conditions in which the target country needs the United States help. This creates a master and subordinate relationship, which allows the US to control the target nation's resources, economy, and military. And if it works, there's usually no more steps. Uh, unfortunately with China, step one failed. The United States thought that when the Chinese people received more economic freedom, they would demand more political freedom and become a democracy which the US could control by rigging the elections and, and you know take control. The US allowed China to join the World Trade Organization and things looked good for a while, but China has remained a socialist state and the people didn't revolt or demand political reform, which means the US moved on to step number two. So the first step for the US and China relationship was uh, from about 1978 with Deng Xiaoping until about 2008. This was when the US hoped China would become more liberal and the people would demand more political freedoms. Since that didn't happen, or not enough to allow the United States to take control of China, the second step started around 2008. So by 2008, it was clear China wasn't changing its political structure, but its economy was in hyperdrive and threatening US dominance around the world. This means that it was time to implement step number two, which is to isolate and limit China's economic and global influence. We are currently at the end of this step because the United States has failed to contain China, which brings us to the balloon in step three. So step three is unfortunately war. This is a simple strategy. Step one, control. If you can't do that, step two is to contain. And if you can't do that, then step three is to destroy. But like I said at the start of this video, most people don't want to go to war and most people avoid conflict. So how do you create um, like enough hate and mistrust 
who actually create conflict. That is where the balloon comes in. Over the last few years, it has become clear that Americans don't like China. I mean, this is obvious, but it isn't anywhere near hate for most people. Most people, most Americans don't hate China. They dislike it, but they don't hate it. Last year, when the conflict in Ukraine started, every news outlet said China and Taiwan is next, China and Taiwan is next, but most Americans didn't really care. It is a small island on the other side of the world, and it didn't seem worth American lives. Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan, and most Americans, again, didn't care, or even thought it wasn't smart to anger China. So what that showed to the people in power is Americans don't really care about things that don't directly affect them personally. So how do you directly affect them? If the enemy is far off and not a real threat in the minds of most Americans, you have to change that perception. You have to make them feel vulnerable in their own homes. You have to bring the threat to the US. The balloon is a physical object floating over American homes and spying on their important military infrastructure. In order to justify a war or to get support of the American people, you have to create fear and hatred. But that doesn't happen overnight. It happens with 99 red balloons floating and watching all the time. It happens with attacks, false flag or real, and it happens with dehumanizing your target. I expect to see more and more of these balloon gates moving forward. The media will be whipped up into a frenzy over and over again for the next two years. Every day, it'll be two minutes of hate until the only option is for Oceania to destroy East Asia. But the problem is, it isn't only two minutes of hate anymore. It is a 24-hour news cycle with never-ending propaganda. Gold sting she, gold sting she, gold sting she. The enemy will be everywhere with no end in sight, floating above them, on their phones, in the oceans, in space. There will be only be one option, one final solution to end this red scare and return Oceanians back to obedient consumers. They are the victims, of course, and they only did what was right and necessary to maintain order and peace. This is why the balloon is more dangerous than you might have first thought. It is an ongoing attempt to change the far off nuisance into the enemy at the gate. It is a continued march towards war. It is creating an enemy out of nothing and that is why it is dangerous. The more fear and the more hate they can create, the better. The Chinese are coming for your jobs and your children and your homes. They're everywhere. They're watching you and they're actively trying to harm you. You must defend yourself and the things you hold dear or it will be taken away. The communists are everywhere and they are trying to get you, right? Only you can stop this threat. Are you an American or are you a communist? We're going back to the 1950s, right? It's the whole do what is right, do your duty and defend your homeland. It's this frenzy that they're whipping up. But all right, before I get too carried away, I just want to say it is important not to get caught up in the frenzy. And it is important to remember that we all want peace. We all want the same thing. There will always be forces that are pushing us to the edge, right? There'll always be both sides screaming in the war hawks that say, we got to do this. But we have to remember that destroying each other will not solve any of the real problems that we are facing. The only way to overcome these is to work together and to compromise. All issues can be overcome without conflict and I think both sides need to reopen dialogue and accept that the outcome might not be the most advantageous for each side, but it will be better than war. If you agree with this, be sure to hit that like button because it will allow more people to see this video and the more people that see it, the better chance that this message of peace can actually get out. We really aren't that different. We all want the same thing. We want a better life for our family and for our countries. And the only way we do that is by working together. Also, if you like this type of video, be sure to hit the subscribe button because I will be putting out more videos in the future. And if you wanna see my last video, you can click here to see uh, what I was talking about before Balloon Gate happened. Uh, so be sure to click on that one and leave your thoughts over there. I really hope that both sides will come together and stop all of this craziness. If you agree, hit that like button.